We recognize the Honorable Member from Constituency 23. You've got enough of a smile on your face. I hope you keep that smile on throughout. How's I that? I have, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Um, and I, I had to sit for an extra second because I wanted to make sure that there wasn't another um, page that was being pulled out of the hat, uh -huh. along with the flying bird and the handkerchief and the flowers that you expect. But, Mr. Speaker, let me say that, firstly, I'd like to thank the Minister for sharing his brief with me because it's very important when we have something of this importance and this magnitude on the horizon for Bermuda, it's very, very important that we are as cooperative with each other so that we can support that which the government needs to do. Mr. Speaker, let me commence my comments by saying that it must be tremendously frustrating for the European Union and for the countries that are members of the European Union to realize that a place as small as Bermuda has the ability to stand on the world stage, to punch above our weight, mm -hmm. and to maintain a blue chip jurisdiction which has uh, appealed to so many companies over the years. Mm -hmm. We have done it in a way that they wished that they could have. We've done it with a taxation structure that has been, uh, that has worked for our jurisdiction, that has not fallen afoul, and that has not encouraged any company to register or operate here that isn't as pristine as the reputation that we want to maintain. Mr. Speaker, I can say that periodically legislation comes before this Honorable House that demands unanimous bipartisan support. We saw a similar approach in the summer when we had to have an additional sitting to be able to agree with the CFATF requirements in order to make sure that we weren't falling afoul of the regulations and rules uh, pertaining to that particular issue. And we met it, Mr. Speaker. This bill today, the Companies Economic Substance Act, is another such example. This bill, fortunately, had intense information sessions in which the technical officers assisted us in the opposition of examining the content of the bill so that we, are, we, were, made, we were fully apprised of the implications and of the urgency. The tech team, in my opinion, Mr. Speaker, has given yeoman service to our country in ensuring that the legislation has reached the stage where it is today. They have literally jumped through moving hoops of fire. And in so doing, Mr. Speaker, every time they thought that we had reached where we needed to be, the EU Code of Conduct Committee changed the goalposts. And we had to respond, and we had to comply. And they've done it. And they've worked, I would say, 24-7, 365, perhaps not quite so much, but I'm sure they feel as though they have. So for that, Mr. Speaker, I believe that it's um, important that we as an entire House express our sincere thanks to the committee, to the tech team who have worked so assiduously in order to ensure that we have reached the standards that are necessary with this, with this legislation. Mr. Speaker, the burdens that have been placed upon our jurisdiction were necessary for us to bear because without it, Bermuda would be blacklisted if we are seen to be hosting companies that may not show that they have sufficient substance in respect of the physical presence that has been required uh, to satisfy the OECD and the EU. According to the Minister's brief, Mr. Speaker, the challenges are not just Bermuda's to face. But as a country, we pride ourselves on being able to maintain a position on the cutting edge of regulation, not just for our own standards, but internationally. Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding the additional steps that were needed in order to meet the standards imposed, we have to examine the opportunities that arise from this exercise. We are up against, as the Minister indicated, extremely tight deadlines in that legislation 
and supporting regs have to be in place by December 31st. Companies that are registering as from January 1, 2019 will be subject to the new regime. Existing companies have a six-month transitional period by which the, the regulations and the rules and the, uh, have, will be applied to them. I don't know any, com any country, Mr. Speaker, who is happy when somebody tells them to jump, we ask how high when we're already on the way up. But that is what we have been faced with this particular legislation and the demands that have been placed on our jurisdiction based on this, the necessity for this. So we can pride ourselves in not just meeting great regulatory standards in isolation, but that we can meet international standards and continue to hold our place on the stage with far larger jurisdictions. Mr. Speaker, you will know that blacklisting threats are not new to us. It has not been too long ago that the former finance minister, the Honorable uh, E.T. Richards, as well as the Premier uh, Cannoneer, along with Premier Dunkley, found themselves in situations of having to go and be toe-to-toe -to -toe and face-on-face -face with the French jurisdiction because they decided that Bermuda needed to be blacklisted. And they were, had the opportunity to push back. This government has also continued to maintain our reputation and our requirements internationally to ensure that blacklisting is not our lot. We have the responsibility to our jurisdiction and to our people, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that our, that our country continues to be held in high esteem and good regard for the regulations that we employ in order to ensure that we do the things that are needed. Mr. Speaker, one might question, what are some of the opportunities? Well, the minister indicated in his brief I have an economic substance in Bermuda effectively means that you've got to physically set up shop. You have to be seen not to be a shell company. You've got to set up shop. In setting up shop, what are some of those opportunities? We will find that companies will require perhaps rental spaces. They will require significant staffing and maybe significant to their needs where I don't think that they are, that is expected that they go above and beyond to bring in bodies just for the sake of bringing in bodies. But they will have to employ people significant to their needs, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's also important to recognize that um, if a company, and, and let, me just, let me just back up one second to say that having a presence is based on a company carrying out the relevant activity that is delineated in the legislation. So let me just say, Mr. Speaker, that many companies already conform to that requirements. And we have, as the minister indicated, other standalone legislation, such as banking legislation and insurance legislation, that demands in and of itself the necessity to have a physical presence in order to show economic substance. So the regulations that will append to the act that we are debating will actually provide a carve out for those industries by virtue of the fact that they are required under their own specific legislation to comply. And for that, the impact on some of our larger companies, insurance companies, will not be that significant because they are already required to be, to, to conform based on their separate legislation. <coughs> Excuse me. But Mr. Speaker, it's important as we go through that the government advises the public. The minister wanted to speak to Mr. and Mrs. Bermuda. It is important that we look at how we accommodate the need for new companies or new compliances to be able to staff their entities to comply with the legislation. 
it may mean that there has to be a certain relaxation when it comes to immigration. We may find that there might not be sufficient talent on island at the moment in sufficient numbers to adequately meet the, the demand that will be required by this act. And I just want to say that we have to, we have to be mindful that when we look at immigration as an issue, we cannot succumb to creating a frenzy because it's a good talking point. We have to ensure that we have the vision that supports the need of the country. And so it may be necessary to bring people in and to have an immigration policy that accommodates in the short term an atmosphere which permits these companies to be able to comply with these new requirements. Mr. Speaker, some of these very people who may be required to come in under different immigration policies are going to be the ones who will help us to save our bacon in terms of the requirements that they are placing upon us as a jurisdiction to be able to conform with this new legislation. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> excuse me. It's, it's going to be important that companies are able to have boots on the ground in short order. And the same way in which we were able to respond to the legislation to ensure that companies fulfill what they have to do, we also have to conform and respond to the requirements to ensure that companies can have the necessary boots on the ground as they comply as time goes forward. <coughs> Excuse me. But Mr. Speaker, I don't wish to be naive in assuming that all of the positive points of this legislation would be the only challenge that we have in its implementation. Because I think that it would be naive if we didn't address the fact that there could conceivably be some downside. And I say some downside. I don't want anybody to believe for a second that I'm thinking that the sky is falling. Because I believe that we have shown our ability to rise above. But I think that we have to be realistic. There may be some companies, Mr. Speaker, who elect not to continue their presence in Bermuda for varying reasons. While they may be engaging in some of the relevant activities, they might start to look at some of their options to relocate onshore as the new United States administration is starting to make things look a little bit more appealing to them, and they may start to reconsider. But that's okay, Mr. Speaker. And I say it's okay, not because I want to embrace the fact that we may have some job losses in the process, but it's okay if it means that someone has to leave in order for us to be able to maintain that level of excellence that is expected of us as a jurisdiction and on which our basic economy is built. Mr. Speaker, I know that some of the recent um, mergers and acquisitions that have occurred in the insurance industry. It's imperative that we continue to closely monitor and that we look at any possible diminution in the workforce that is likely to arise from that phenomenon coupled with what is going to be required here as companies consider whether they wish to use the six months transition to comply to a new standard or whether they choose to relocate elsewhere. We heard the minister give an appeal to Google, to whom we have been an incredible host. And as opposed to them taking advantage of an opportunity to say that they will relocate, to invite them to consider staying and setting up and meeting the substance requirements that are outlined in the necessities of this act. So Mr. Speaker, I believe that <coughs> excuse me, when, we, when, when this uh, legislation is enacted, 
I believe that we can make lemonades out of the lemons that we have been dealt. Excuse me. We will continue to be a jurisdiction where transparency is the key. We will continue to say that we can have the information exchange that we've been known for. And if there are more tiers that have to be signed, we will obviously comply and conform with that requirement, Mr. Speaker. Because I think that once all is said and done, when the dust is settled, and when we have implemented this legislation and we've jumped through the hoops, as we've said, not just as a technical team, but as a country, once, those, once that is all said and done, when the dust settles, I believe that Bermuda will be considered in the light in which it has always been once we went into the international business arena. And that is a jurisdiction that is well regulated. Mr. Speaker, the one thing that obviously gave me a little cause for pause because of the demands was that of the requirement for information on beneficial ownership. Now we know that that has been a, an extreme sticking point. If the idea of beneficial ownership is one that is going to, or the requirement is one that's going to be applied across the board internationally so that every country ranks pari pursue with the next, then perhaps we can say we don't want to fall below that standard. But we have been asked to do things that other countries larger than us with more resources than ours, don't have to do. They don't have to do these things, Mr. Speaker. And it's very interesting that because of our jurisdiction and obviously the threat that we pose to the stability of some of these larger companies who think, countries who think that their tax base has been eroded because of Bermuda's excellence and they just haven't figured out how to effectively respond. So they've come with a club and with the, you know, the, the bully attitude uh, to which the minister referred to say, you will do things our way. And because we have no choice in this matter, Mr. Speaker, we will do things their way. And we will get them at some point to understand that even though we will do things our way, we will still find a way to outstrip and to excel because it's what we do. We know how to respond, Mr. Speaker, to challenges. We've seen it from the advent of our international companies' business. We've seen it across various administrations. And we recognize what is needed in order for our 21 square miles to stay afloat. And we will find ways to examine, we will examine ways in which our re responsibilities are maintained on an effective basis. Mr. Speaker, in, in closing, I want to say that we support the legislation because, as I said, we have no choice. We will continue to work together with the government. We will support the government in its bid to keep us from being blacklisted and thereby creating a detriment to our, our economic success. It would be remiss of me in closing, though, Mr. Speaker, if I did not also express appreciation to the companies who have gone through the consultative process and given their input and given their fears and given their observations and the realities that they will face on a practical basis and recognizing that they have a very short time within which to comply. It may not necessarily be easy for them, but I believe that when we all work together and we lift, when everybody uh, lifts together, the load will be lighter than if we were lifting alone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.